If you're interested in Power BI, Excel and Teams, then you're in the right place. My name's Wynne Hopkins and I'm going to take you through this presentation. The story begins a long time ago. Uh, we had the printing press and books became more available. Literacy rates had to increase and we created a literacy culture. Now we've got the digital age and data is becoming more accessible and data literacy is really becoming important. Got some stats with companies that use data experience 18% higher margins and 80% of all enterprises will be using modern BI platform. Ultimately, customers want to gain business insights, informed decision making. So let's take on this scenario. What is modern BI? Well, really, we can have an overview of BI by saying it's a combination of where you get your data from, how you transform it, and how you present it. So we get our data, and that's often the most important part and the most complex part. We analyze it, we then visualize and analyze it again, we publish, we talk to other people, we then refine our information, we might need to get some more data. You know, it's a real cyclical process. So here we have the overview and split into Excel and Power BI on the right hand side where we can gather data, we can analyze it, we can model it, shape it. And then on the left hand side, it's how we publish it and share it. And we can publish it to powerbi.com and then we can embed those visuals inside Teams and there's a nice collaboration piece that goes on there. Um, and we're using tools that we're familiar with. The learning curve is shallower and everybody can work together better. So let's get on with the demo. I'm going to pretend to be Pradeep. Pradeep is an analyst. Um, he produces reports for the business. Um, one set of reports is for the sales team. So he's a member of the sales team channel. And under the general channel, we have various chat going on, but we've also added some files. So there's an Excel file in here and the teams members can go in and actually access this report straight away. There's no need to jump out into some other version of Excel or go scrolling through a W drive. Everything's here in the one common place. So nice and easy to find. You can edit this file in Excel at desktop or Excel online, or you can actually edit it here inside Teams. We also have a scenario where there's a monthly reports channel. So this monthly reports channel is where the regional sales managers actually go and save their files and they can put some commentary and comments in those um, in the chat as well but ultimately there's a nice folder here and in this scenario people are just saving their files down on a daily weekly monthly basis um, unfortunately there are somebody has dropped in a few uh, mp4 files and a couple of other things but we can clear that update right later those files form part of a source report that has been built by Pradeep He's then built a Power BI report and then embedded that Power BI report back into this team channel so that anybody can then just jump into this report and get access to a fully interactive Power BI report, which those Excel files in that folder have been part of and they contribute the data to this report. If you want, you can actually open up Power BI properly. So click on the little link and then we're into powerbi.com and the normal Power BI workspace and people can interact with their data here. And again, fully interactive, fully sliceable. You click on a bar of a chart and all the other data reflects what that chart part of the chart is. Now, if you want to get some more information, you can even ask questions. That's pretty cool. So there's all sorts of functionality. Now, if you want to get a bit more detail, what you could do is use Analyze in Excel. What this does, so you click on Analyze in Excel, what this does is actually opens up an Excel file with a direct connection to the data that's inside that model that's creating those dashboards. So let this open up, uh, you click OK, and now we're going to get a live link. And here's a little link, here's the pivot table report, and here's all the fields and values that are inside that data model. I can just drag them in. And this is connected to that same data source, that single source of truth that's held in powerbi.com. Okay, so we can pull in some information, I can drag in some values, and there's my report. You know, it's 
pretty clever how it can do this. I can add a subset. I can do it for product by country. Um, let me just do a quick bit of formatting. I'll use my trusty little access analytic toolbar trick to format my numbers in my pivot table in one click. And let me sort the data. And look, let's make it stand out. So let's add a quick bit of conditional formatting. Let's add some data bars. So for pivot tables, best to go to manage rules, um, add a new data bar, select that option. And let's do a nice data bar with a bit of, uh, rather than solid fill, let's go for the gradient fill. And here we go. We've quickly got a bit of insight into um, our data. And again, there's one source of truth for this Excel report and that Power BI report. No more e emailing reports around to various different people. So that's one option, okay, where you can actually connect into that and that's using Analyze in Excel. Here's another report that Pradeep's actually built already, but we'll come back to that. Within another team, which Pradeep's also a member of, He's built some reports, okay? One of those reports is the one we just saw, the sales performance report, and you can, he keeps it here so everybody in the development team knows where that report is and can get access to it. So you could open that in Excel and then do some editing. That report, remember, is actually gonna get its data from this folder in this team channel. It's really a SharePoint folder, but it's just um, surfaced in Teams. And one of the options he's got to take care of is filtering out those horrible MP4 and MP3 files that somebody's accidentally dropped in there. So this is the report that he's built. Um, let's just talk about how he's built this. He's built it using Power Query, okay, and Power Pivot. So Power Query, you can just go Files, Get Data. He's gone to get data from a SharePoint folder because that's actually where those team files are held and he's able to consolidate all those files in one go. There's lots of other data sources as well. You can check those out. If you haven't checked out Power Query yet, you're really missing out. It's the world's best data washing machine. Absolutely amazing at cleaning up dirty, messy data. So let's go into one of these queries and see what he did. Essentially, he has got a set of data and it's all been consolidated into one big group. Okay, there's all these buttons in Power Query, there's filter rows, there's take things out, remove rows, replace values, group by transform. You can do an amazing number of things and there's lots of content out there um, showing you how all this works. But for example, this is the list of all the files that are in that SharePoint folder. And then he's gone through and he's just filtered on just the Excel files. So that then filters out those horrible MP4 and every other file that might be dropped in there. And there's other ways of setting that up to make it more and more robust. Okay, so we, we've just got down to the Excel files. Then he's removed the columns he didn't need, expanded out all the data from each of those separate files, and we're ready to load. So you go close and load that then loads the data and you can choose whether to load that data into a table in Excel or into the data model. Now, I refer to the data model, it's called Power Pivot. I refer to it as the world's best data wardrobe. So you hang up all your nice clean clothes and you're able to press evening wear and they all line up. Or you press red clothes and they all line up. So Power Pivot is where all the data gets stored. And in here you've got things like your data, but you've also got formulas, okay? DAX formulas, D-A-X, Data Analysis Expressions. This is a DAX formula. It's just giving me the total of my cost of goods sold. And DAX formulas can be simple and DAX formulas can be really tricky. Um, they're similar enough to Excel to look familiar, but they're different enough to make them quite difficult and there is a bit of learning involved. You know, this is a pretty complicated one. But the key thing for Power Pivot and the data model is this relationship view. Now this is a pretty scary relationship view. Um, I'm not exactly sure that this is how you would necessarily build this, but for demo purposes um, it looks impressive so we'll stick with it. You can just join different items together and report on all of those things, um, slicing and dicing the data in multiple different ways. 
when we're done with this we go publish here we go we can publish this workbook which is basically the contents the power queries the DAX measures the relationships all that can get published to Power BI because Excel and Power BI share the same module of Power Query and Power Pivot or the data model. So here's the model. I've just published it. I'm going to my workspace where I published it to. Let's take a look. And it'll be under the data sets that is actually being published to. That was actually a workbook, the PL summary that had been loaded up. So here we are, we've got our data. I can actually now create a report here in powerbi.com if I wanted to. Let's just have a go. So here's that here's I've clicked the button to click create report. I can get access to all my data in the column down the right hand side. I can just double click and ask a question about my data. This is so powerful. You don't even know have to know which measures to have to drag in. So year to date revenue, say. Um, over time. Now that's pretty good. And I don't know if you guys have seen the ability to sort of explore the data um, using a bit of um, AI, but let's have a look at this. Um, we are going to go and click on a data point. I'll just right click on this decrease. Okay, right click, analyze, explain the decrease. Here we go. It's now popping up list of suggestions about what has caused that decrease so this is such a time saver absolutely amazing so you scroll down find the different types of analysis that it's provided for you and if you find one that's interesting or helpful uh, you can potentially change the visual style just there in that window uh, i'll go with the first one the waterfall chart and i can just add it and now that's added into my report that can be an absolute time saver. So this is the powerbi.com world. We're able to edit reports also in Power BI Desktop. And it's probably preferable to go to Power BI Desktop. I'm going to connect to that Power BI data set. So the one I've just published into powerbi.com. So again, single source of truth. Here it is. If I go to the sales and here's my data set. I'm now connecting to that data set in powerbi.com and here on the window on my right is all my data. You've got more functionality in Power BI Desktop than you do in powerbi.com so it's advisable to build your reports here. So let's go for something like uh, total revenue by country. Okay, so I can pull that in. Um, and I'll change it to a bar chart rather than a column chart. So there we are, we've started with that and next we can build something else as well. And now they're interactive. As soon as you click on one bar for USA, we see our chart on the right changes. We click on our bar on the right and we see that our chart on the left changes. So fully interactive report and that's how straightforward it is to build a Power BI report. I could then publish this back up to one of my workspaces and these reports are all connected to the same set of data. So I'm just going to cancel this temporary report that I build in powerbi.com. Don't save the changes. Let's have a look at the one that um, Pradeep did build. So we go into global sales performance and here is the report and it's this report that's actually embedded in Teams. So the process was the sales guys put their Excel files in a Teams folder Pradeep pulled those Excel files into an Excel file, published the model, built a report off it. But one of the things I do want to show you is that within this report as well, within the developer report, they can check who's been viewing the report, how many people, what pages have actually been used and are being useful for the business. So that's a great way of being able to be more productive. There's no point in you producing reports that nobody's looking at. This is the out the box solution, um, but you can cu fully customize this report um, to produce whatever visuals and whatever statistics you want to actually produce. But it's brilliant that you can actually access this and work out who is viewing your reports. So let's just jump back into the slide deck to finish off and summarize around um, how this worked together. 
so we use teams and those files in teams are actually stored in SharePoint um, we can access those into Excel or we could use Power BI directly we can use both these tools they have Power Query and the data model for joining all the data together and producing your reports and Power BI and Excel do work beautifully together if you found this useful, then please check out our blog at accessanalytic.com.au. Follow me on Twitter, connect with me on LinkedIn, and I hope you all found this useful. Thanks.